Chantel Delaney here from M Squared. I am a certified herbal practitioner and the product educator here. And it is dry skin season, y'all. Um, even us combination skin folks tend to get dry this time of year and dry skin types just seem to get more dry. Uh, this change of seasons means temperature and humidity fluctuations that tend to contribute to drier skin. Um, if you happen to have switched on your furnace recently, you might notice that your dry skin is even a little drier than usual. Uh, so if you don't already cycle your skincare regimen for the seasons, it really is time to start. Um, the change in weather and temperature tends to be a little stressful on our skin. And unfortunately, dry skin or dehydrated skin ages faster, damages easier, and looks more aged. Um, our activity levels and our diets tend to change with the seasons as well, and that all has an effect on the way that your skin looks. So it's really easy to support your skin by cycling your regimen to match the seasons and make sure you're giving your skin um, enough hydration support to transition the seasons well to maintain that hydration, protect your skin from damage. And uh, of course, there's some key ingredients that I always seek out for dry skin. My favorite ones include hyaluronic acid, calendula oil, macadamia nut oil, aloe, and vitamin C. So first, let's talk about the proper order for skincare products when we're talking about facial care. So not everybody uses this many products or does this many steps, so feel free to omit um, ones that you don't use. But if you were to use all of these items, this is how you should do it. So we always start with our cleanser. Step number one is a cleanser. And for dry skin, I recommend avoiding any cleanser that is uh, foaming or soapy or like a gel. The best choice for dry skin is a cream cleanser or an oil to milk cleanser because they don't strip the skin of its natural oil. So they don't contribute to more dryness. The second step of your regimen um, is a treatment. So treatments are optional. They're not meant to be done every day. Typically like once or twice a week would be an ideal um, cadence for treatments. I do think that dry skin types need treatments probably more than any other skin type. So um, a treatment could be like a mask, a peel, or a scrub. So I think that dry skin types do best with scrubs and peels, and my preference out of those is a peel. So peels use um, uh, botanical acids like alpha hydroxy acid or glycolic acid to break down, build up, and dead skin cells that are on the surface of the skin. So the one that I'm loving right now is a relatively new one. This is Derma uh, It's a 10 what is it? Brightening 10% multi-acid liquid peel. It's a bit of a mouthful. Um, I love recommending this one for dry skin types. It is in their brightening line, but great for dry skin. Um, I'll talk more about this one in a second. Your third step would be your serum. So this is another step that I recommend doing if you are a person with dry skin. So uh, serums penetrate to the kind of innermost layer of skin there with like your deep hydrating, um, deep hydrating products. So uh, something about serums is that you can absolutely layer them. You don't have to just use one, you can use multiple ones. But if you're using a vitamin C serum, make sure that you apply that one first. So vitamin C can get easily blocked by larger molecules in serums. Um, so it can uh, maybe not penetrate the skin as well. So it should always go on first and any other serum could go on over top. Your fourth step would be a mist or a toner. Uh, so this step is there to help balance the pH of your skin, which tends to get altered after we use a cleanser. Um, because cleansers tend to be a little on the alkaline side, mists and toners bring your skin back to its kind of proper acidity. Um, they also work to help lock in serums. So if you're applying a serum, say one that contains hyaluronic acid, uh, using a, a a mist or a, a toner on top helps to kind of lock that serum into the skin. And that's also why we would always put the serum on first. Uh, step five would be your moisturizer. Moisturizers also work to lock in those serums and they provide a protective barrier to the outermost layer of the skin. Um, so again, serums draw the, the, draw the ingredients deeper into the skin when they're applied before your creams. Creams are richer and higher lipid, lipid content, so they should always go on after serum. Um, to, to lock it in and, and protect the skin from the outside in. So serums work from the inside out and moisturizers work from the outside in. The next step would be your eye cream or your eye gel. A uh, little 
Tip here is you should always use your ring finger. This is your weakest finger. You always use it to dab eye cream on, never swipe or rub. The skin here is very delicate, especially if your skin is dry, so you can get micro tears rather easily. Um, that leads to redness and swelling and uh, visibility of, of fine lines and wrinkles. Uh, your eye cream will absorb really easy just by dabbing it on like that, and you'll help to keep that skin strong by not pulling at it. The final step in your regimen would be your sunscreen. So of course I recommend to use sunscreen all year, uh, not just in the summertime, and I recommend using mineral sunscreen because they're better for you and they're better for the environment. Mineral sunscreens are designed to sit on the surface of your skin to block UVA, UVB rays. That means that they would also block your serums and your creams if they were put on out in the wrong order. Um, so that's why sunscreen is always the last step. So now we're gonna cover three simple focus points for dry skin skincare. So hydration, treatments, and protection. These are the three things you wanna to touch on in your skincare regimen if you're a person with dry skin. So beginning with hydration, um, first off, people tend to only think about hydrating categories for dry skin or for, for mature skin types, but it's really um, something to think about for all skin types, especially as we move into these colder months. Um, it, our skin requires both like internal and external attention when we're thinking about hydration. So uh, drinking plenty of water, eating healthy fats, and getting electrolytes is really the foundation for keeping your skin hydrated from the inside out. And I really recommend using a high quality omega-3 supplement uh, to help keep your skin hydrated. Uh, absolutely crucial thing that you could do to keep your skin looking looking good and, and staying hydrated. The one that I like to recommend for dry skin types is Aqua Omega's plant-based omega-3 because it contains a, um, a high potency of cranberry seed oil. So cranberry seed oil is rich in tocopherols and tocotrienols, which are basically super potent vitamin E's that protect your tissues from free radical damage and promote healing and reduce inflammation from the inside out. This one is particularly good for dry skin types for that reason. On the external side of things, uh, deep skin hydration is addressing the dermis, which is the layer of skin below the epidermis, our outermost layer of skin. So epidermis is the outside, dermis is the layer underneath that. Serums are the best products to address that dermis layer of skin because they're designed to penetrate deeper into the skin. They're typically made with gels or uh, lighter oils like marula or jojoba, uh, botanical extracts and floral waters and hyaluronic acid or your alpha hydroxy or glyco glycolic acids, things that have the ability to sink in deeper and affect that inner layer of skin. Again, this is why serums should always be applied before creams. I know I'm really driving it home, but it's so important. Creams are made with denser oils and fats that cannot penetrate penetrate as deeply, but they have other benefits for hydration that I'll come back to in just one second. So your skin is always regenerating. Dead skin cells slough off constantly while new ones are being created deep within the skin layers. So as your skin grows and sloughs off, those innermost layers of the dermis work their way to the surface. That's why that inner hydration part is so important. The inner layer is eventually going to be the outer layer. So if you consistently feed that dermis layer lots of good skin nutrients and hydration, your skin will continue to improve over time. So. Uh, for teenagers, for example, it takes about 28 days for a full skin um, skin regeneration cycle. In middle age, it can take between like 28 and 42 days, and typically for 50 plus, it can be upwards of 80 to 85 days for a full regeneration cycle of, of your skin cells. So this is why I always tell people to stick with a facial care protocol for two to three months before judging its effect, because you really wanna see what um, what that kind of regeneration looks like. You're not gonna see that in a week or two. So in a serum for dry skin types, I always like to look for something that's got hyaluronic acid and vitamin C. So my favorite one is Derma E's Ultra Hydrating Dewy Skin Serum. The hyaluronic acid works to bind to water and pull it really deep into that dermis layer. The vitamin C helps to encourage healthy collagen, pro collagen production, which gives you smoother and stronger skin. And this product also has green tea, which strengthens the skin and helps to protect it from envi environmental stress. That vitamin C in there gives your skin a really healthy glow and kind of continues to improve the skin the longer it's used because it works on that deep, deep level. And another great serum for dry skin types is the Phyto Age Serum from Oceanly. So that's this purple line here. So the Phyto Age category is their kind of more mature 
category, but mature skin products are more hydrating, so they tend to be interchangeable categories. So this is a waterless serum that you apply directly on your skin from the stick. It contains a really unique to oceanly ingredient called phytoglycogen. So phytoglycogen has an even, even a greater water binding effect than hyaluronic acid does, so it helps to plump the skin and pull moisture into those deeper layers. Another uh, favorite of mine and perfect for the minimalists out there is All Good Soothing Aloe Gel. So this is an all-purpose topical aloe that you would use for sunburns usually, um, but it contains apple peel extract and hyaluronic acid, and those make it really great for a hydration booster for dry skin. So you can use this the same way you would use a serum, so it would go under your moisturizer. Plus it's great for burns and first aid use too, so multi-purpose product is always something that I like to have around. So moving on to treatments. My favorite treatments for dry skin are peels and overnight treatments. So I've got two favorites right now, both from Derma E. So as I showed you before, the brightening 10% multi-acid radiance liquid peel and the ultra hydrating uh, alkaline overnight facial. So these are my two favorites for dry skin. The uh, Derma E Hydrating Overnight Facial is a really great product. I actually gift this one to people often because it's uh, really satisfying to use. So it's this really kind of beautiful blue gel. It's pH balanced. It's uh, a hyaluronic acid overnight facial gel treatment. They make it with alkaline water, aloe, green tea, rose water, chamomile, and copper peptides. So the copper that's in here is antimicrobial. It works to reduce redness. It firms the skin and it helps to kind of strengthen dry skin because it helps to regulate moisture levels. It's the perfect ingredient for a dry skin type person. So you apply this gel at night and then you wash it off in the morning. And I like to use this product once or twice a week, but you could use it more frequently if your skin was extra dry. The Brightening 10% Multi-Acid Radiance Liquid Peel is a, a potent vitamin C peel that is excellent for breaking down dead skin cells. It helps to promote uh, faster cellular regeneration and to brighten the complexion. So all of these things are things that dry skin types tend to need. I prefer this over a scrub because it's, I find it to be a little less irritating. That said, if you have sensitive skin, the vitamin C might be too strong, and then in that case, you should look for a scrub instead. Uh, but that is definitely something that's important for dry skin types is to make sure you're helping to remove the dead skin um, that tends to build up on the surface of the skin because it's dehydrated. So I love a peel for that. A scrub would be good too. Uh, so I mentioned earlier that I have a bit of a two-pronged approach to hydration, so deep skin hydration, so that's your serums, light oils, and then surface protection. So surface protection is um, moisturizers that are containing ingredients that are higher in fats and oils, so ones that kind of hydrate from the outside in and offer that layer of protection from the outer elements. So this could mean ingredients like cocoa butter, shea butter, coconut oil, avocado oil, and calendula oil. Um, the latter being my most favorite. So one of my go-to uh, products is Walita's Skin Food Facial Care. Uh, the whole set is excellent actually. So it has all the magic of their classic skin food, which has been around for over 100 years. Um, so it's got calendula, chamomile, lavender, pansy, and rosemary extracts in it. Um, the facial care products have more kind of face-friendly ingredients added to that. So they've got uh, squalene and olive leaf extract. And in the overnight cream, this one here, it's got macadamia nut oil, which is incredibly hydrating, the perfect thing for people that tend towards dry skin. So there's a day cream, the overnight cream, and an oil to milk cleanser. All of these products are incredible for dry skin types. They're super soothing, they're healing, they're hydrating, and they're designed to protect your skin's natural oil levels, which is exactly what we want if we tend towards dry skin. So speaking of Walita and Skin Food, their Skin Food Original is the 100% must-have product for anybody with dry skin. It is bar none the best remedy for dry cracked skin and can be used on every part of the body. So it's got a thick balm-like consistency, so it really works to protect the skin from the elements while promoting healing and hydration with those botanical ingredients. If you prefer a lighter texture, you can use the Skin Food Light, which is all the same ingredients, just different ratios of fats and waxes. So it has a more uh, lotion type texture than the original. But personally, I love the original for dry skin because it creates a bit of a, a layer, protective layer. Um, and if you really wanted to go for it and really treat yourself, the uh, 
Skin Food Body Butter is literally the nicest thing I've ever spread on my skin. This is an old jar here. It's almost gone. I've been kind of saving it. Uh, that does come in a beautiful glass jar now. So if you were to pick this up today, you would get it in a gorgeous glass jar. Uh, beautiful, beautiful product. All the magic of skin food, but it's in a whipped, uh, beautifully textured body butter. And they've added a little uh, kind of citrus note herbal scent to it. It's beautiful, just melts into your skin. An excellent gift as well um, to you from you if need be. There is also a lip butter in this in this um, set that is an excellent thing to have on your person all year, uh, especially if you're if you tend towards dry skin. Um, their lip butter is amazing. If you are a person who prefers a waxier lip balm for dry skin, um, that's what I prefer. The Evron lip balm is a cult classic. It comes in kind of a peach tube. It is an incredible product. They make it with rose wax, so it's just so beautiful. The, the scent is beautiful. Um, creates that nice protective layer while softening and moisturizing your lips. So one of my absolute favorite products, and I like to recommend it to people who suffer from dry lips all the time. Another rec regular recommendation for me for dry skin and dry lips is All Goods Goop. So this is an all-purpose healing balm that has its place in your first aid kit as well as in your beauty regimen. So it can be used all over the body, face included, and it's an excellent treatment for dry patches, cracked skin, and irritation. You may have seen it before. It looks like this in a glass jar. Um, this is their new Goop on the Go, which is the same formula but in this very convenient uh, aluminum recyclable tube. So love that. And of course, we can't talk about skin protection without talking about sunscreen. So mineral sunscreens do tend to be trickier for people with dry skin because they are thicker than conventional sunscreens. So they um, can be a little trickier to spread nicely if your skin is dry. Mineral sunscreens spread much better on well hydrated skin. So if you have dry skin, make sure you always apply a moisturizer before you apply sunscreen, whether that's on your face or anywhere on your body. So my favorite facial sunscreen for dry skin types is Derma Ease Brightening weightless moisturizer. It's an SPF 45. Um, this product feels deceptively thick at first. When, I, when it comes out of the bottle, you'll think it's too thick. And then when you put it on, it actually spreads on really nicely and soaks into the skin really nicely. It's a, it's a surprisingly good product. Um, I loved it a lot more than I thought I was going to at first, and it is so good. It doesn't have a white cast like many of the other ones do, plus it's got a, a nice amount of vitamin C in it, which is a great ingredient to brighten the complexion, and dry skin types are always more prone to dull complexions. So to summarize all of this, with dry skin, we want to avoid foaming soapy cleansers that strip the skin of its natural oils. We want to deeply hydrate with serums daily before we apply our moisturizers. We want to keep the surface of the skin smooth and clear with scrubs or peels a few times a week. And we want to use a good moisturizer and sunscreen that protects and soothes the skin. So it's pretty simple. That's my recommendation for dry skin. If you have a favorite product for dry skin, let me know what it is. I always want to hear about it. Thanks.